Let me introduce you the third speaker who is joining us virtually. The third speaker is a general manager of Aquaculture Stewardship Council in Japan. Let me briefly introduce you the general manager. Mr. Yamamoto earned his master's degree in James Cook University in Australia. He's the general manager of ASC and working hard for the development of eco-friendly aquaculture industry. His topic today is market-based approach to promote environmentally and socially responsible aquaculture. As many people already mentioned, we are going to spend quite a lot of time on discussing ASC. Thank you for listening. I'm Koji Yamamoto from Aquaculture Stewardship Council. Um, today I'd like to talk about market-based approach to promote responsible aquaculture. So first of all, looking at um, global seafood production, um, capture fishery is somewhat stagnated over past decades and instead the aquaculture production is continuously um, growing in fact this is the fastest uh, growing food production sector and it's projected to grow into the future as well and this will to meet the growing population and growing demands for the seafood at the moment it's about 50 percent come from farm and other 50% come from farm but this portion will be um, more portion will come from aquaculture but this aquaculture have a lot of challenges and if it's not done properly it could lead to environmental impacts such as pollution of the water or the ocean floor and also the feed is important aspects and we need to be careful about the marine ingredients fish oil fish meal used on those feeds are from um, healthy fishery stock and it's not depleting the uh, marine resources in the ocean and the other important aspect is about disease management um, sometime type of antibiotic which is reserved for the human usage by WHO is um, used at the farm level and this could lead to very serious um, antibiotic uh, antimicrobial uh, resistance and then looking at the social side in some country forced labors or a relationship between farm and community uh, can be troublesome so it's really um, those challenges need to be uh, looked into in details in order to achieve the sustainable development of aquaculture sector and looking at sort of supply chain and market situation broadly there are many drivers for responsible seafood and looking at the consumer there are increasing awareness of about the fishery resources and also there is a trend of so-called ethical consumption uh, as a lifestyle choice and looking at all those uh, business sector they are uh, increasingly sort of uh, uptaking the concept of sustainable development goals, especially uh, number 14, uh, life below the ocean. These are the core of the goals, the foundation of the goals that subsequent um, goals can build up on, as this graph indicating. And also ESG investment is recognized and practiced in many countries and there are a um, number of global seafood initiative such as CBOS and seafood Steward uh, stewardship index that 
sort of facilitates the pre-competitive collaboration between seafood companies or um, sort of rating the performance of seafood companies on sustainability. So Aquaculture Stewardship Council has a vision that aquaculture playing important role in providing seafood with a social benefit and with a minimum environmental impact. And we try to achieve that by managing certification program. So we have, we are established in 2010, so just 10 years ago. And we do run a third party certification program and setting the measurable indicator and standards. And we manage this program with high weights on transparency and traceable products from farm to the table. Currently we have 12 species standards and we are continuously revising these standards to meet the uh, development of industry. This is three to five year cycle. And also we are trying to uh, consolidate all these standards into the one sort of a speech, uh, one, one standard, farm standard, and then divide it into the uh, system uh, type of operation like farm, cage, etc. inland uh, rather than this species uh, specific standard. So this is something work in progress in revising. And this next slide shows what sort of component we are looking into uh, in our standards. This is the example of salmon. So basically we try to capture everything around the farm from impact to the environment, so that's water, wildlife, or benthic conditions. And also all the inputs such as feed, uh, chemicals, and also the energy usage uh, from the farm. Uh, plus uh, social side, so that includes working condition and relationship between the communities. This is the graph showing the transformation of the farm performance in Chile and Norway. Uh, this is a salmon farm. And this colorful bar indicates different components of the standards that what, what it's called uh, non-conformity. So this is what farm couldn't meet. So in a way that their performance was not reaching uh, meeting the what the standard is requiring and then you can see that over the years those non-conformity index reduced so meaning that both Chile and Norway although the number of the total SC uh, certified farm is increasing actually the performance non-conformity is uh, reducing so that means farm itself has improved their practice over the time. So this is something uh, we capture visibly on the uh, recently published M&E report called Positive Impact. It's on our website if you're interested in. And those seafood that we certify at the farm level will now enter the supply chain and all the way to the consumer and we have this system called a chain of custody where we share this platform with wild capture fishery program called MSC and so for ASC we have farm standard certified farm and then MSC they have a wild captured uh, seafood and then they enters into the supply chain and we make sure that those uh, companies uh, processing those certified sea seafood is not mixed with non-certified seafood. So we ensure um, certified seafood throughout the supply chain all the way to the consumer um, and 
doing that by applying different certification at farm level certification, um, chain of custody, COC certification in a supply chain. And then finally, if those uh, products are passed on to the all the certified players, it, it's, uh, you can see that on the logo on the product. This is the important mechanism where consumer point of view, they perhaps feel um, ocean resource issues are too big to tackle by the one individual, but actually everybody's everyday shopping choices, just to pick the product with the logo on, could really um, impact all the way down to the, um, or in a way that supporting the certified farm that is doing the good thing for the environment and you know, looking after the social aspects of the operation. And currently, ASC certified farms is over 1,300 in 39 different countries. Uh, many of them are in Europe, but also in South America and also in Asia. These are the, some pictures showing um, abalone farm in Korea and also wakame farm in Korea and Japanese oysters and yellowtail and trout. So it's a wide range of seafood uh, even around this uh, region, Eastern Asia. And currently about 6 to 7 percent of those 12 species that ASC has a standard for is certified uh, compared to the global population, uh, global production of those species. It's very uh, small amount, except perhaps salmon, um, over 40% of global salmon, far, salmon production are already ASC certified. And looking into the market, uh, situation. Uh, we have 25, over 25,000 ASC certified products in the market in 90 countries across the world. And this is the survey conducted last year and then indicating what's the recognition, the awareness of the logo in different country and the program started, uh, we have a headquarter in Netherlands and the program is strong in Europe. So you can see a country like Netherlands, Germany, we have 40 to 30, over 30% 30 of the recognition of the logo in the marketplace. And the Japan where I'm based and working, we have about 9%. So still long way to go and we are working to promote, uh, we are doing the campaign every year in uh, many parts of the world to kind of uh, inform the consumer about the importance of the sustainable seafood and try to um, improve this uh, recognition at the marketplace. And here is the uh, example of what sort of place we can find our product in Japan. So the retailer like Eon and Coop are uh, very important in terms of the volumes, um, place where ASC certified products are sold. And important to note, those retailers are committed, made, made a public commitment to say that 20% of their seafood will carry ASC or MSC in case of the wild uh, seafood um, by 2020. And also logos are increasingly used in a food uh, catering, uh, sorry, um, cafeteria, restaurant uh, type of place. And Panasonic is interesting company where they are, as you know, the electric company, but in order to meet their SDG goal number 14, they have uh, introduced uh, 
ACMSC certified seafood in their uh, uh, company's canteen. So this is, and then now uh, about their aim is about 100 uh, cafeteria across the Japan. They try to serve those um, meals with a, with a logo. So seafood have really, I today I talk about mainly certified seafood, but there are a whole range all the way to, of course, the, the seafood that it should be avoided, such as IUU uh, from IUU fishery, illegal, unregulated, unreported fishery. But there are somewhat, you know, many of the uh, farms, farms cannot necessarily meet the ASC standards as indicated earlier it's only six seven percent so it's important to also work um, on improvement area it's called aquaculture improvement program AIP to support those um, often small-scale farm into the better sustainability direction So in summary, as a way forward, it is um, important we have a supporting structure on the ground at the farm level, such as um, technical support and also the financial support, perhaps from the public sector. But it is important, certification could be an important tool in connecting those sustainable production into the marketplace using market-driven approach. And there are increasing number of committed um, seafood company and market that are, that are waiting for those sustainable uh, seafood. And those sustainable seafood cannot be um, thrive without people actually actively choosing it as well. So important to uh, further uh, work with the partners in increasing the awareness of um, importance of responsible sustainable fish fish seafood and we can achieve that by collaborating with um, partners at the production site all the way to um, marketplace thank you very much